Interesting topic. We're going to end with a bang. The best part ever of your food. Extraneous matter. So all the fun stuff that winds up in your food. Insects, rodents, so insects. Or the whole insect, rodents, hair, urine, poop, birds, also feathers, poop. <laughs> and then the non biological ones, which could be stone, sand, any form of dirt, metal, glass, all of this collectively is extraneous matter. And this is very common analysis that you would do on incoming ingredients and final products. So when in your incoming ingredients, before using them, you want to make sure that they uh, follow uh, required standards and there are defect action level for the number of insect parts that are reliable or rodent hair. Um, we will learn that it's inevitable. We are consuming insects, we are consuming rodent hair, we are getting some of that filth. Uh, consider it protein, added protein intake. Well, think of it this way. Insects are becoming actual part of our diet and we are considering them um, as new sources of proteins. <laughs> but then that's potentially a problem with FDA. If insects become part of our diet, how are we going to um, do the regulation since there are only certain amount of insect parts that are allowable? consume the whole insect, I don't know how that's going to happen. So, but, you know, again, it's a good source of protein, very nutritious, digestible source of protein. So they can contaminate our food during harvest, during storage, during transportation, and also during processing. So at any time point in the food chain, they can get to our food and wind up in our plate. So if you think about harvest, so the, the little insects and the larger insects that are continually absorbing energy and harvesting grain, you're harvesting part of the insects as well with you. So that's how they get into um, the first the crops, whatever they are. And then during storage, in large storage capacities, it's very hard to keep those little rodents away. They're going to sniff. They're going to sniff the food and they're going to come to it. So they're everywhere. That's why rodent hair and urine and excreta could be found in the food. But because of that, there are regulations. So they're unavoidable, they're there. But if they're present in a certain extent or amount, the food is considered adulterated. If it's containing food, putrid, or decomposed matter. That's why we have to process or produce our food under good manufacturing practice, which ensures that the processing is done under sanitary conditions. And then we also inspect raw material as they come into our uh, facility, and also monitor the operations closely so that we don't have infestation of rodents or insects. But nevertheless, due to the fact they can infest our food in any stage during the chain of the process of the food from the land to the plate, there are defect action levels that are set by the FDA. That means this is the level that would be allowable. Uh, beyond that, it would be adulterated. It cannot be uh, consumed. Um, so, for example, we are allowed to consume 30 insect fragments of one rodent hair per 100 grams.
kind of peanut butter. So look at your peanut butter jar and see how many grams of peanut butter jar you can estimate how much insects you are consuming along with the peanut butter. Study the five insect fragments. Study the five insect fragments. And why you remove 50 grams of flour? So your piece of bread is loaded with, with insects. And then think about them as extra sources of protein. <laughs> so this is just <laughs> a joke here. Luther investigated the southern regions of loading coal content in their big peanut butter. And told it this one only has 70% insect fats. But you know, again, they're good for you. Terminology that we usually hear and see um, in this capacity, we have film. So film includes animal contamination or any other objectionable matter. So this is kind of an overarching uh, label. There's heavy filth and light filth. So heavy filth is when you have sand, soil, stones, insect and rodent excreta, the pellets. And uh, they can be separated by sediment. So we'll look into that in a minute. Light filth that would float and they have lower uh, density and they are soluble in oil, so oil is there. So they're separated by floating, as I said, and these would be small insects and fragments of insects. Uh, rodent hair, feathers like wool, as you see. Um, sea filth, so this is another term that we see, and it is, they are separated based on size, so that's why they call them sea filth. So there are concerns because we are oftentimes looking at count, how many insects part per a certain amount of food. It is hard for them to determine if those whatever fragments or objects you find are actually insect fragments. Some are very well recognizable, like this one, uh, mandible, so they can easily be detected. But if you are looking at the outer layer of an insect, or if you have people on outer layer of an insect, then you won't be able to um, determine that it's an insect part unless you have extreme insect numbers. So that is potentially a problem by not recognizing Another problem is we see with some methods of a lot of transfers from different containers and filtering, so we might lose some um, and have errors. And also, it's based on <coughs> some insects are large and insects are small, and one insect is considered one part. So a small part and a big part of the same. So it's by part, not by grams amount. So that is potentially a problem that um, needs to be fixed, maybe. Okay, so there are different methods. Some of them are AOC and AOCC uh, IF based methods. So, for example, a method for spices and condiments, looking at foreign matter, a common one is just using a sieve because we're looking at, at spices, so they go through and anything that is bigger than the, the mesh size will stay on the um, mesh and then they could be viewed under the microscope and counted. So you would take a certain known amount of sample, 50 grams or 100 grams, and run it through the sieve and you would then look to see how many parts and determine how many parts per certain amount of sample is found. So in, sh in shelled nuts. So here it's we're looking at, for example, heavy filth. So whether it is the excreta or or soil or pebbles or what they whether they are, so they yield sediment. But you don't want the the nuts to sediment. So you use uh, chloroform and carbon tetrachloride to to make the um, nuts float, whereas your heavy filth will sediment. And you separate you separate them that way. Uh, you can filter out, and again put the filter paper under a microscope or lead and you can count, or you can ignite at 500 degrees and wait to detect. 
determine the amount of filth that is present relative to the amount of nuts. So here looking at uh, lung filth, so insect fragments and rodent hair, this is a method for rye flour. So you use the clean method and in this case you digest to an acid and to help the bran to be in the aqueous part, not to be with the filth, we add clean and leave it to air. And then, um, so then you separate whatever is trapped in the oil layer. So the oil layer would have the insect fragments and rodents, and everything else would be in the acid. So you see the rhizome trap flat, so the rhizome is flat, where you use a certain amount of oil that would fill the upper compartment. And then there is a stopper that you would just bring up and then separate the oil layer from the aqueous layer. And then your rice felt would be in your oil layer. So you transfer your filter wax into a filter paper and then you put it under the microscope. Another light felt method for flour, we call it the flotation method. Here again, you digest the organics with acid and then you add mineral oil. Um, and then you use a separation channel where you have your oil and your potassium, and then your filth would be mostly in the oil layer. You would separate the two phases, filter in the oil, and again, count under the microscope. Now, if you're looking at grains, so per hundred grams of grains, or I think, yeah, per hundred grams of grains, it's okay to have 32 kernels that are infested with larva. So look at this, they are living in there. That's cute. <laughs> so this is x-ray radiology. So it's not an official method, but it allows you to see the, um, the extent of infestation in these grains. So other techniques is the x-ray. Um, and then we have another technique which is measuring uric acid, which is this, it measures the insect and bird excreta. ELISA to determine uh, the presence of insect protein, MRI, and then microscopy to look at if there's nematocyte and different uh, differentiating between black, plastic, and crystalline contaminants, which is done by light microscopy. So like I said, you're allowed to have 32 insect damaged kernels per 100 grams of wheat, but in a premeditated manner, so if you do the x-ray and you find more than that, what you can do is you break open the yeast, crack them open, and then do aspiration. So you can run your wheat on a belt and have uh, blow air, so then the, the insect fragments will float and then your grains will remain remove some of that infestation that way. Uh, you don't have to also um, crack the wheat if you have insect um, present with your grain or whatever, you can also run it on the belt and get rid of those by aspiration. Air floating, if you have um, soil or stones or pebbles, you can put your grain and have a forceful air that goes through the belt, your grain will float and then stones, pebbles, and dirt will remain and be saturated by the heat. You can use magnets to remove any types of metal that could be also present. So this kind of a preventative measure when you are receiving or are, um, cleaning up some raw material. Guess what, we're done, it was like, it took 15 minutes. <laughs> did you see what Will did? <laughs> again, again, these people did not see here. <laughs> well, great. It was great teaching you. Although you're very loud and talkative, look at you guys. <laughs> Full of energy. Full of energy.
maintain this energy for the final is going to be really tough. <laughs> All right, it's not going to be very different from what we talked about this morning. So you'll be okay. Just study well. Yeah. Huh? Dane, you didn't get plus five today. What? What is your priorities? You know, you have to set your priorities. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even have a free one weekend, but you had priorities. <laughs> <laughs>